And if you have questions during the tutorial, you can ask your questions in the chat option. Let me start with the first. If you remember these questions from the previous lectures, it was that <clears throat> when we are trying to find the pressure distribution in a submerged object, we should know two things here is that the first one is the I will just summarize the pressure is is normal to surface that was the first thing that you should know and for this case here the pressure so you can see for the second case pressure is not normal therefore this one is wrong and the second one is that the pressure increases linearly with depth so if you go out the deeper and the deeper parts of the fleet, you should have the linear change in the pressure. So, but you can see here is that the, the pressure doesn't change linearly. Therefore, the, therefore we don't have a true answer for the case of this one. It is not linear. Therefore, this is not true. And you have two options, which is the C option and the D option here. For C and the D, you can see it is linear change. It is linear change. Okay, the A, A is also true. A is also true, and the D is, C is also true, and the D is also true. And the, the third thing we should add here is that the P has value at some Depth. What do I mean by this one? So, for example, this part. Okay, and the, the pressure at that value at certain depth, but it should be that you should remember that this one is the, the perpendicular depth. Okay, so that at this depth here, so you should have this amount of H. This amount of H. Let me use. So at that depth, you should have, this is the H. And the pressure here, the P here, is the rho GH. Therefore, you should have some amount of the pressure at this location. But here, it shows that this one is zero. You can see it is zero, that this is false. So these three cases, these three cases, which is P is normal to surface, increase linearly, and the P has some value at some depth. So here you should that know that this H is normal to free surface, normal to free surface. What I mean here is that you see the P is rho G H. So let me write it here. P is rho G H. And when I take H, I should take this, uh, this perpendicular H. I cannot take this one. Okay. P is, for example, the rho G, let's say that this one is L, rho G L. This is false. Okay. You cannot take this one. You should take this perpendicular height that is per normal to the free surface. You can see it is normal to free surface. And when I say that the free surface, free surface is this one. Here you have the air, and here you have the water. And this line is called free surface because it separates two surfaces. Okay, now it was the one more question here was if you remember, it was that to find line of action of a resultant force is found in a similar way, if you remember this part, so that. If you are trying to find a resultant force FR, what we are doing is that you are just integrating FR with small DF forces. Yes, we have done it, but I'm just reviewing it. So this one was the FR, you just add the small forces DF, and the, in the case of the pressure, you just add the PDA. Okay. Okay, this one was the first case for the FR. This is the first equation. And the second equation will be that when you are trying to find the line of action of the FR, which is the YR into the FR will be equal to that YDF or 
to be y p d a. That one was the second equation. Okay, now let's good. So with this one, I, I think we can start the example here, but there is a problem that I cannot. So let just one minute. Okay, so it is okay now. So, so the second. So if you do the integral stuff, we have said that you can get this final relationship here. So you can do this one by the second moment of area, or you can do this one by the first result here. These are the result of the integral equations. I will not talk about this one, but I will do example here. The example statement is as follows. We have the phone here, a student's phone, and it has a height and a width of 14.5 centimeters and a 6 point five centimeters. Firstly, we should look at the left-hand side. So in one minute, I will. I will erase. Just one minute. So we have two phones here. One is that under some angle here, you see it is under some angle. And the second one here is that, so it is not under some angle, it is vertical. The second one is under some angle. So the phone is as the dimensions of 14.5 centimeters and the 6.5 centimeters. If you look this phone as a front view, in the front view, you will see something like this one. Here you have the sensors, etc. Here you have the power button. Okay, then this phone will have a dimension of the 14.5 centimeters and the width of 6.5 centimeters. Okay. And the suddenly it fell to the measuring tank in fluid mechanics laboratory, okay, suddenly and unluckily. Height from free surface to the top of the phone is 40 centimeters. This is top of the phone and the height to that location is 40 centimeters. Okay. Find the pressure and the force where the phone starts. This is the first case. The B case is that the force is acting on his her phone in two conditions and the show the pressure profile on it. So this is condition one. The phone is vertical. The condition two is that it is some angle here. So we should find the forces acting on his phone or phone, her phone in two conditions and the show the pressure profile on it. In addition, find the location where it acts. Okay, let's start the solution process. So firstly, we should show the free body, sorry, the pressure diagram on it. So if you remember, we have said that you will have finite amount of pressure at this location and it will change linearly. And here you will have also this amount of pressure and the pressure change linearly. See, it is linear loading if you know from the statics, it is linear load, linear load. Okay, so I have done these integral results in your magistral, in your lectures. So I will not start it again, but I will start from the last point here. So to find the resultant force due to pressure, that resultant force due to pressure, you can see that it will be P0 area plus rho g h c into area. Okay, so, so firstly, let me start with the first case, pressure and the force where the phone starts. So I should find the pressure here. I should find the force here where the phone starts and I will then find the resultant force. So let me do the first part, the pressure at this location. So here I am trying to find the pressure P at the top of phone it will be that rho, g, and h. If you remember, we have said that it should be perpendicular h, which is 40 centimeters. Rho is 10 to the power of three, which is water. And g is 9.81, h is 0 0.4. And from here, you will find the pressure that is at the top of the phone. This is the first part of the question. 
And the second part of the question says that you should find the force acting on the, so this one is, okay, they have found it. Now the force due to pressure, due to P, so now again the same at top of phone. Okay. You are looking for the top part of the phone here. Okay. Now what I will do is that I will just multiply this rho g h with the area of the phone. Okay. To do that, I know this part, which is the three nine two four, and the area of the phone is fourteen point five centimeters multiplied with six point five centimeters. You can see the dimensions here. It is 6.5 centimeters for the width and the 14.5 centimeters for the height. So it will be that 6.5 multiplied with the 14.5. These are some centimeters, then I should convert into meters, then 10 to the negative 4. Okay? And uh, with this one, you will get the force that acts at the top part of the phone, which is 609. And eight, three, seven, ten to the negative four newtons, or you can just this one, thirty-seven newtons. This is a small force that acts at the top of the phone. Okay, so I've shown the pressure profile. Now the second part starts. So what is the resultant force FR? What is the resultant force that acts on the phone? And then second part, one more part I will do is that where is the location of that resultant force? Okay, let me do it. This is the phone. This is the free surface. Here I have the phone. On that phone, I have pressure profile here in this manner, in a linear manner. Let me add the phone back here. This is the phone here. I have the pressure profile that acts on the phone here. These are linear pressure profile. And the second one will be that I should find what is the resultant force. A resultant force is PDA, okay? And if you remember that from the, magister, from the lectures, we have said that you can find by just integrating this PDA, or you can just find the rho g hc into the area. What is hc? hc is distance from free surface to the centroid of the object, okay? So we should look for the distance from free surface to the centroid of the object, okay? The, when I say F resultant, it means only due to hydrostatic pressure, hydrostatic pressure, okay? Resultant force due to this load distribution, you can see the load distribution. I should find the distance from the free surface. This is the free surface. This is the centroid of the phone. You can see the centroid of the phone. I should find this distance here. Okay. And from the question, it says that here, this part is 40 centimeters. This part is 40 centimeters. And the height of the phone is 14.5 centimeters. Therefore, this location here, the small part, it will be that 14.5 divided by two, because it is rectangular area and the distance to the centroid of the rectangular area will be 14.5 divided by the two, okay, which makes 7.25 centimeters. Okay. Now I just replace the values and I will find the resultant force will be equal to rho, which is 10 to the power of three, g, which is 9.81, hc, the distance from free surface to the centroid of the body, which is 40 plus 7.25, centimeters, therefore I should convert in the meters, multiply with 10 to the negative two, rho g h c, and the area of the phone, area of the phone is 14.5 multiplied with the 6.5, which is width of it, and multiplied with 10 to the negative four. Okay. That will be the resultant force, this one, okay. This one is due to P only, okay, pressure. That will be the resultant force that acts on the phone due to pressure only, okay? There can be other forces, but in this water problems, there is only one force, which is pressure. But you should know that this is only pressure resultant force. And this final result 
You can tell me the final result. I can wait for your answers for the chat. You can write your result and So let me see your answers in the chat. You can see what they have it. There. Do you have any answers? You can write your answers in the chat so I can see it. So let's see your answers. Nobody has the answer. Seems very interesting. So Reza says 43.69. So it is Newton's result. So I think you have considered all of the units. So let me say that this one is 43.69 Newtons. Let me see if there is any other answers that I can check it. So the Rajat says 47.68 Newtons. It is just multiplication, just multiplying. If you have the error in this multiplication, Yes, Reza, answer. Rajab says that false. Okay, good. So that this is the answer for the resultant force. We have found it. So the next part of the question will be, where does that resultant force act? So where it acts, okay? The location of it, in other words, what is that location? Y resultant force. What is the location of the resultant force? But you should remember that, so the, this is the centroid. You can see resultant force doesn't act. This is the resultant force. It doesn't act at the centroid, but it acts below the centroid. And the point where it acts, we call it as CP, and it means that it is center of pressure. Okay. The point where resultant force acts, we call it as center of pressure. And then, again, for this one, we can use the formula given here. So P, A, P zero A plus rho G sine theta. In our case, theta is zero. So the y squared dA, it is second moment of area. But here we will just do some more simplifications. You can also use the integral here, but we will use the formula, the final formula, I will open this find the formula and write it. You just apply the formula here. But here in our case, the theta is zero. Therefore, you don't need to consider the theta here. Just one minute, I will write the formula here. So YCP, the distance Okay, so YCP is the distance YCP. So we just note this one as YCP or you can write this one as YR. It doesn't matter because it is a distance at the end. But I have said it, CP is center of pressure. This center of pressure is the where the resultant force acts. Okay, this is the point. 
central pressure is a point. Okay. But the point here, the second one, it is centroid. Okay. And the resultant force always acts below the centroid. And that distance, so we have derived this one in our lecture, so they will not derive it again. And the YC into area. That will be the formula that we are going to use for the for the for to find to find the distance. So YC is the distance till the centroid of the body, which is 40 plus 7.25 meters. So that will be 40, which is the distance from that part to this part, plus 7.25 centimeters. This one is for YC distance. I'm using centimeter here, but we can use the, we can use also the meter units, but then you will have the same result. And IXXC, this one I will write, and the YC part is again the, the distance from the free surface. We are considering only this free surface to the centroid of the body, and that distance will be the YC distance, and you will have 47.25, and the area of the body will be that 14.5 multiplied with 6.5. At the end, I will get in centimeters. Okay, this one is very important. You will get centimeter unit. And IXXC is, so this one is, this one is the second moment of in area. This one is second moment of area. So the C means is that the axes are passing through the centroid. Let me show this, if this is the phone here, this one is your phone. Okay, we take the axis here, which is the XC axis and the YC axis. IXX is, C means that you are taking the second moment of area about these two axes, about the centroid. Okay. For the for the rectangular surfaces, if it has a height of H and if it has a width of the B. So you will have B H to the power of three divided by the 12. Okay. That, is, that is the four second moment of area for the rectangular surfaces. B H to the power of three and divide by the 12. So here, therefore, I will add the B sign, B value, which is for the phone is 6.5. And the height is the 14.5 multiplied with 14.5 to the power of three and divide by the 12. This is the general formula, okay? This one is general formula. So from this one, you will get the final result. And uh, you can also cancel out some common terms here. The 14.5 is also here, which is 14.5 squared, 6.5 cancels out. And you will get this final result. I can wait for your answers if you have it. So let's see your answers, what you have get. So let's see your answers. This is a simple calculation. So Ali Isayev says that it is 47.62 meters. I'm writing Ali Isayev's answers, but if there is any different answer than from this one, you can tell it. 47.62 centimeters. That is the distance to the, to this point, that one is. 47.62 centimeters. So again, you notice that it is below the centroid of the body and therefore, see, there is one more. Okay. So I think we have finished the first part of the question where it says that 
first part of the question, we have found the location of resultant force. We have shown the force profile acting on the phone and also so the location of it, resultant force, etc. We have found all of it. Now comes the second question, second part of the question. Now instead of being a vertical phone, we will have the phone under some angle. Let's solve it and to see what we have got. So now the phone is under some angle. This is the free surface here. And in that free surface, you have the phone here. This one is the phone. And the phone will be some angle here. Let me add the angles. So when we take the coordinate axis, you see that coordinate axis always, one will be inclined as the same as the surface of the body and other one, of course, perpendicular to this Y axis. And this one is the 30 degrees. You can see the question here, the 30 degrees here. And that 30 degrees angle also acts here but also the 30 degrees here. Okay, anyway, I don't need to write it again here. Okay. Now let's find the resultant force. Firstly, I will draw the pressure profile on it. You can see the pressure profile now. It is again, inclined with a horizontal, so with a linear profile and the forces should be perpendicular to the surface and it is linear, okay. And the first, let's find the resultant force F R and this dimension is 14.5 centimeters, okay. And this dimension, they also keep the same dimension here the dimension is the same, they don't change it. What that dimension is 40 centimeters, they don't change it, but actually when it is inclined, this dimension should decrease. But in the question it is not changed, therefore it is the 40 centimeters again. Now I will find the resultant force. Resultant force due to pressure will be equal to rho g h c into the area. Now comes the main part of the question. You have h, the you have h coordinate and you have y distance. So let me add it here. So h and the y. When we say h here, so this one is h actually. So draw it one more time. When we say h, h is this distance. It is perpendicular to free surface. This is the H, but when we say Y, you can see Y is inclined. You can see the Y here. Y is inclined. This one is a perpendicular to free surface. But when we say Y, it is inclined. So inclined, okay. you should be very careful. But for the first case, when the phone is perpendicular or the vertical and the Y and the H is the same. So in that case, in this case, Y and the H, they are the same stuff because it is in the vertical direction. But for the case now, you will have the H and the Y that are very different from each other. Okay, now let's solve it. So I should find uh, rho, which is 10 to the power of three. I should find the G, which is 9.85. I will find the HC and write it here. And the area is again, so that 14.5 multiplied with the 6.5, 10 to the negative four. Now let's find the distance to the centroid of the body. I've said it, it is, you see it is HC distance. So till the start point of the body, it is 40 centimeters. And I know that dimension here, which is 14.5. Let me write it here. It is 14.5 centimeters. And I will build a triangle here. And this one is 30 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. And then you will have this part which will be that 14.5 at cosine 30 degrees. Okay, so you can see it. So from this one, I will find this distance. And uh, if I need the centroid, I will just divide by the two. Okay. 
Okay, so if you have the answers, you can tell me. So actually I have the answer, so let me, 14.5. This distance is 16 point, 12 point, sorry, 12.6. This one is 12.6 centimeters at distance. And uh, if I need the centroid of the body, this part, it will be half of it, okay? This distance will be half of it. Let me add a different color. So that distance will be half of it, which will be 3.6 centimeters. Therefore, the distance from the free surface to the centroid of the body, it will be addition of this one, which is 46.3 centimeters. And this one, again, should be multiplied with 10 to the negative two, because it is centimeters and the other ones are in meter units. It should be in SI unit. So if you have the result, you can tell the result. So let's see who has the final result here. I can wait for your answers. You will just say me the value of the resultant force. HC is 46, 43 point. No suffer. That 30 has to be 60. Yes, you are right. Yes, actually you are right. If this one is 30 degrees, then this angle is 60, yes, you are right. So this one will be, this one will be 60 degrees because if this angle is 30 degrees and this one will be that 30 and the 60 degrees, therefore it will be the cosine 60 and therefore it will be, so it will be that half of it, seven point, 7.25 and this part also so 43.62 43.63 let me add it 43.6 okay now with this one you can have the final answer so i will wait for your final answer for the resultant force and the, with this one we will finish the resultant force for the inclined phone. Then I will find the location of it. But again, you will see that the H and the Y coordinates matter. If you have the H coordinate, if you have the Y coordinate, all of them matters because you should be very careful when you use it. So let me wait for your answer for this one. It is, uh, they say that it is 40 newtons, it is 40.3 newtons. This is the resultant force. Now comes the location of it. So I assume that, for example, the resultant, if it is a centroid, resultant force will be below it, okay. F resultant. Now I will find the distance to that resultant force, the location of it. So therefore, I will need the y coordinate here. So the formula is given with the y coordinate. I will write the full formula and we will just apply it to our case. Let me add it. So the previous formula again, so if you, there is a previous one, the yc plus ix xc. So let me add it y c p now you see that the y coordinate matters instead of using the h coordinate now we are using the y coordinate c p is as i said this one is the point c p y c plus i x x c divided by y c into a okay 
Now I will find the YC distance, IX, XC. This one is the same and the YC distance. It all matters is the YC coordinate here. And the YC coordinate, so let me draw this part with a different color so you will see that. So if this is the free surface and then the, from that free surface to the centroid of the body, you will have this. This one is YC, okay? This one is the YC, but I know the HC value because, actually it is a little longer. So I know the HV, HC value here because HC value, this HC is 46, 43.6 centimeters. 40, 3.6 centimeters, okay? I know the HC value and I know the angle here, which is 60 degrees. Then from this HC value, I can find the value of the YC. And therefore the YC value will be equal to that HC um, multiplied with, so then, no, it is not a, it should be division. Should be division and uh, this one will be cosine. Yes, if I'm if I'm wrong, you can tell me. So cosine sixty degrees. If it is wrong, you can tell me because it is a small trigonometry here. So with this one, you will find the YC and IXXC. I don't need to write it again, but it is twelve one, and then you will have the H coordinate, which is the six point five the power of 6.5 multiplied with 14.5 to the power of 3 and the area 6.5 multiplied with 14.5 and the YC coordinate is again so that HC which is the 43.6 divided by the cosine 60. Okay. If this is okay then you can tell me the value of the YCP. We can tell the value of the YCP and we finish this example. So you will just add this. You will find this equation here. Okay, so let's see who has the answer. So does anyone calculate? So that, does anyone calculate? If yes, we can wait. Otherwise, I will move on to the next one. Does anyone calculate the question here? It seems nobody, everyone is resting. Okay, then you can calculate by yourself at home if you are interested. Otherwise, you can fail in the exam. Good. So we have finished the YCP part and we have finished the cases where in one case it is in under some angle and in the second case there is no any angle. So now I will move on to the next question here. So I will not want to waste my time. So the second question will be that we have a diving record. This one is very similar to the previous questions. We have a diving record, which is uh, 332 meters, 0.35 meters below the free surface. 
This is actually the same question, but I will just uh, write the procedure here. You can get the values by yourself. Let's see by Ahmad from Egypt. So there is a person, let me know. So that person has the diving record here. So let's see, he's not happy. And the record is the distance from the from the top surface to the free surface is the this one meters. And the, if the his height is so the, you can assume that this person has a rectangular body, which is very similar to phone example. And here you will have the width, which is 0 0.3 meters, and the height will be 1.8 meters, okay? You can assume this value here, and the find the resultant pressure force acting on Ahmad, what is the resultant pressure force, and the, its line of action with respect to its head, okay? Now, instead of concentrating on the, the line of action of the force with respect to free surface, now we are interested in the with respect to its head, where it acts. Now let's first solve the question and the first to find the resultant force. The resultant force, if you remember, I've said that it will be rho g hc into the area. And we are simplifying the problem, simplifying problem with the rectangular dimensions and the rho is 10 to the power of three and the g is 9.81 and the hc is the distance from the free surface to the centroid of the body and that one will be that. 332.35 plus 1.8 divided by the two, because if you assume that this one has a rectangular body, so this will be the half of the height, and then multiplied with the height, which is 0.3 multiplied with 1.8. That's the only with the resultant force, and the yr, the resultant force, which will be the ycp, and that one will be that yc plus ixxc multiplied, divided by yc into area. And for this question, and the y and the h coordinates are the same, because when I say that h, it is here, and when I say that y, it is here. They are the same coordinates, therefore no need to worry about it. And the yc will be that, so 332.35 plus 1.8 divided by the two, that will be yc. And then ixxc will be here, so that b is 0 0.3, and the h is 1.3, to the power of three divided by the 12, that one will be IXXC part, divided by the HC, which is 332.35 plus 1.8 divided by the two, which is will be the YC part. And the area is the same, which is 0 0.3 multiplied with 1.8. Okay, we, from this one, you will get the value of R. And since we are interesting with respect to, with respect to his head, and if you do that part, so if you say that the, it is with respect to with respect to his head, then what you will do is that you will subtract the y r minus the distance to that to the head of the person. Okay, this will be the solution. If you have questions about the solution procedure, you can ask. Otherwise, I'm moving on the next question. So it seems that nobody has any question. Everybody is genius. Okay, so let's move on to the next question here. This one is the, the it's very similar to the phone example here. If you have the phone and it is submerged in the water and there is some resultant force acting on it, it is the same as this one. Yeah, the question is same, but we are approximating the body as a rectangular body. It is great huge approximation, but if you take the real surface of the body, it will be more difficult because here you will need the integral equations. Even you can need the software here. Okay, next question here. So we have a question that states that uh, in the lectures, we have shown that the resultant forces rho g y dA and the yp is rho g y squared dA. When I say that the yp here, it is actually ycp, ycp, and the ycp is yr. Now there is a gate in front of water. You can see that there is a gate here. 
And uh, what is the problem here? The water on the left-hand side, it applies some pressure on the gate and therefore tries to open the gate. And here you have the hinge. So you can see the hinge here. The hinge is there and the water applies pressure and this gate it tries to open the gate. Okay? But the problem is that we have the Rx, the reaction force here. This reaction force, it can be some bolt or it can be some structure that prevents the gate to open. So in one side, you have the pressure of water that tries to open the gate. On the other side, you have the reaction force that tries to block the opening of the gate. And the gate shape, it says that it is semicircular. You can also notice it here. It has the four meters diameter, and actually it is two meters. And two meters radius here. And determine Rx to prevent water from following using the relations above. Gate is semicircular, and this one is also two meters. Because if it is two meters, and this one should be two meters too, and this one is four meters. Okay, so let me solve the equation, but this one says that use the integral relations instead of the, the relations that we had here. Let me go back to here. Using the HC and the YCP relations, just use the integral relations over G Y D A. Let's start to solve the problem. We can see it is the Y coordinate here, and uh, I will find F R, which is the rho G Y T A. I should find it, but using integral relations instead of, so that don't use, it says that, use this one, okay, use this one. Okay, it says that don't use the rho G H C into the A. Okay. We not to use this one, but we'll use this one, the integral. So the integral form, I will start one by one, which is the resultant force. It says that it is integral of rho g y t a, okay? And the rho is constant, g is constant. I can take it outside of the brackets or y t a. And I will take a small d a on the surface here. Let me take it. Small horizontal strip. This one will be the horizontal strip here. Actually, it should be the horizontal. It is not horizontal in any case. It will be horizontal stripped. This horizontal strip has these dimensions. The width of it is dy, and the sorry, the height is dy, and the the width is B. So I can write this one as the rho G. And instead of DA, I will write B into DY. Okay. But this B value is not constant. Why? Because if I take another area here, if I take one more area, so since it is arbitrary, I can take the area at any point. If I take the area here, it will have the different B value, so B. This B is not the same as that B. Therefore, the B value here, this one, is a function of Y. So it depends where I have chosen the Y value. Okay. Since this is the free surface, you can see it. It is free surface here. And uh, here you have the Y. Y value. And the distance from the free surface to the surface of the body is, overall is 10 meters, height is the two meters, and the 10 minus two meters, it is eight meters. Okay. And then the rest part, which is Y and the eight. So here you will have, this part will be Y minus eight. Okay, this one is Y minus eight. This one is eight, so they will have this part. Now I'm trying to express B with Y minus eight. So I will take the center of it, okay? And I will add one more coordinate here. This one is that coordinate, which is one minus eight. And then I will have this coordinate. Then I will have that coordinate here. You can see the coordinates, okay? So this part is y minus eight, and this part is b by two. Let me write the rectangle here in 
different view so you can see it so this part is y minus 8 this part is b by 2 because it's at half of it and this part is r this is the rectangular area so then b by 2 squared plus y minus 8 squared that will be r squared that will be r squared okay and uh, since i'm interested in the value of the b as a function of the y so what i will do is that b by 2 will be equal to square root of r squared minus y minus 8 squared and since we have the two value here we can find the b value which is which will be 2 that r squared minus y minus 8 squared this will be the b. I will just put the b value back to here. So y is there, b is there because it's a function of the r. So since I want function of y because r value is constant, is two meters. So if I integrate this quantity here, I will get the resultant force. The integral part can be a small homework for you. Okay. You can use any software tools or you can use, you can do by yourself. You will find what is the value of the y r. There are two chats here, let me see. Okay, so I have finished the first part of it. It says that the FR. Now the second part of it says that find the YCP. YCP, in other words, since if it is, I don't know the location of FR, say that if it acts here, this one is FR. And the question says that what is the distance to that FR? YCP. Okay. Again, the question says that YCP is used. Okay. It says that use this relationship. Where is that rho G Y square DA and divided by the resultant force. The question says that use this result. Okay. Use this equation instead of don't use. It says that don't use. We had the equation where it says that YCP is YC plus IXXC divided by the y into a. Okay. Don't use this one, but use that one, the question says. So I will do it. This part is very easy part because I just replace and the rho is there, g is there, y square is there. And instead of dA, you can write b dy and the b is function of the y. So b dy and the fr value here. fr value you will calculate fr, okay, this one calculate from the previous step. Okay, you will calculate FR from here, which will be homework. So then you will just write rho G and then Y square. And then instead of B, I will just write two. And it will be that R squared minus Y minus eight squared and multiplied with the dy. And the y, now comes the y-axis. You can see the y-axis goes from the, this part to that part. And since I'm integrating on the dA surface, so I will take the when y is 8 to y is 10 meters. So the limits of the integral is 8 to 10. Similarly here, limits of the integral is 8 to 10. And this one divided by the fr. We, so this one will be a homework question for you. What you will do is that a homework, okay? So you will calculate FR, calculate FR from the integral relationship, from integral, and then you will compare that one with the, compare your result with rho g hc into area, okay? You should get the same result, otherwise you are in trouble. Similarly, you will calculate YCP from integral, okay? And you will compare that YCP with the formula YLC plus IXC divided by YCA, okay? You have to get similar results, otherwise you are in trouble, okay? This is an integral formulation of the of the method to find the hydrostatic pressure. Okay.
So we have one more question. I will go to the simplest one and then I will go back to the difficult one. The question is, we have a plate here. This is the plate. And inside this plate is bolted, located okay, on top of oil. There is a compressed air here. You can see the pressure here, 50 kilopascals. Okay. And it is located on top of oil. You have the oil here and there is a plate. There is a square bolted plate on the cylindrical surface. So the air is actually located on top of oil. So I should correct it. Air is top of oil. And the plate is bolted on the cylindrical surface. And then dimension of the plate is 0 0.6 meters. This one is squared. Therefore, you will have 0 0.6 meter here. And you will have 0 0.6 meter here. Then if the specific gravity of oil is 0 0.9, so the SG of oil is 0 0.9, find the resultant force acting on the plate. What is the resultant force acting here? And it's location of line of action. This is the second part. Similar coordinate system to question 4A. So it says that you will use the coordinate system, which is very similar to question 4A. And in that question, the coordinate system was something like this one. This one was the Y axis, and this one was the X axis. So let's start the solution process. We will first start with the FR value here. FR will be equal to, so that uh, rho G H C into area. But you should be clever here because that rho G H C here area here, it is true for, for one homogeneous fluid. If it was one homogeneous fluid, for example, only oil, okay. If it was only oil, you could use this relationship where it is rho G H C area, okay. But since it is not an homogeneous fluid, what we will do is that we will add the pressure value, which is 50 kilopascals at the top of it. So here you have the 50 kilopascals at the top of it, and then we can integrate this quantity here. So let me do that. Firstly, I will show the pressure profile here. So this is the free surface, let me do that. This is free surface here. At the top of it, you have 50 kilopascals, okay? And then here you have the plate. I'm showing the side view of the plate and the, the pressure at the top part of the plate here. So this one is 50 kilopascals plus rho GH. So H is this one. Because you have 50 kilopascals at the top of it, then you have oil pressure, which acts at the top of the plate. Okay, you have two pressures here, which is 50 kilopascals. Let me add one more arrow here, for example. One part is due to 50 kilopascals, that's acting here, and one part is due to rho g h. Similarly, again, it will be linear here, and linear, and linear. Therefore, this relationship will not be valid for our case, and for our case, it will be that. So FR will be equal to rho G H C plus 50 times 10 to the power of 3 and multiply it with the area. That will be the case for us because you should have one more pressure value here, which is the which is the pressure value. Or you can go back to the derivation here from our lectures. We have said that if there is atmospheric pressure, if you consider it atmospheric pressure, you just add it. And instead of our case, it is not P0, it is the 50 kilopascal. If you do that, if you do that, then you will have rho of the oil, which is specific gravity, and then multiply with the 1,000, it will be 1,000 kilograms per meters cube, because that rho is so that oil will be SG of oil multiplied with 1,000. Okay, 1,000 is rho of water. Okay. And then G value is 9.81, and the HC value is the distance from this surface to the centroid of the body. A centroid is here. This distance will be 0 0.3 meters, and it will be that 2.3 meters. The area will be 0 0.6 multiplied with the 0 0.6. And from here, you will get the value of the resultant force. Okay. 
and then our location of the resultant force it will be there in our next lecture so with this one i stop here if you have questions you can ask otherwise i stop here and then i will move on i will keep the rest for tomorrow tomorrow okay i will stop the recording now